everybody and welcome back to the Moshix Mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we will continue the mini-series I started in the previous video, I believe M83. So this makes it, uh, this video M84, where we look and explore the MBS and ZOS SMF system. SMF stands for, as we saw in the previous video, for System Management Facility. It's a it's a reporting facility that's built into the operating system of MES and ZOS, which writes everything that happens within the operating system and within jobs executing on the system. It writes everything into a vSAM dataset, usually called sys1.manx or sys1.many, uh, into one of those, or it could be more than one, and then it keeps switching between them so that they don't fill up and the system can't write anymore. And so this SMF writes down everything that happens within the system. Now, if you keep a faultless log by dumping every time, so every time that one of the data sets fills up, if you dump those into a collection data set, you can, and if you keep up a faultless collection of all the SMF records, you can actually go back in history and find out exactly who did what, when, and to what. And so that's exactly the purpose of SMF. As we also said in the previous uh, video, SMF is, for instance, also used for ZOS customers, people who run real mainframes, uh, to report on the usage of, of ZOS, because as you know, ZOS cannot be, you don't buy a permanent or perpetual license for ZOS. What you buy from IBM is a rent to use a ZOS, and you're getting paid by peak for for hour window usage. And how do you report the four hour, four hour window top usage? By using SMF reports, which you have to send into IBM. They ingest the, the report you send, and then they will bill you for the top usage of your of uh, ZOS. Anyway, but uh, in the previous video, we looked a little bit more at ZOS, because there you have a lot more of the tools um, that makes it that make it easier to handle SMF. But of course, uh, the vast majority of the viewers of this channel are MBS users, uh, such as delivered by TK4 here. And so today we're gonna to be looking at how to look at SMF records on uh, MBS and how to glean information and insight from what's going on in your system. Unfortunately, in uh, MBS 3.8, we don't have the key report generator that we used last video, which is which is ICE tool, ICE tool which is part of the DFS sort. And um, ICE tool is a for payment feature, or uh, it's a it's a feature, it's a product that IBM charges for, and that does not exist on our MBS. Um, and so, as such we have to do without ice tool so in the previous video we looked at ice tool here on mbs we have to work with smf in a different way of course smf is still working in in mbs it was already smf was i think introduced in the early 70s 70 or 71 so and since our mbs 3.8 is from around 1983 SMF had been around for over a decade by then. So how do we know that SMF is working? So first of all, we log into our TK4 and we go to the IMON, the amazing uh, system monitor written by Greg Price down under in Australia. And if you press M for systems management monitor, it will tell you that SMF is currently running it could be turned off, but in TK4 it's turned on by default, and we see it from here. And then we also see that uh, which data sets are in use. So right now we see that it's writing onto sys1.many, because this is the active data set. This, by the way, are vSAM data sets. And the other one, sys1.manx, is full, and that's probably why it switched to the other one. So we could actually, um, there's there's a lot of data sets, there's 148 tracks here, a lot of data in this in this data set. We can start looking into this data set to see what's what's been going on in the system. How do we do that? Well, uh, we still have the same reporting capability to dump 
that we have in ZOS. So the dump uh, job that I had shown you will still work here with some slight differences. But if you go to GitHub and you go to the MVS repository that I have on GitHub, Moshik slash MVS, I put in here after the, the last video, I put in here some JCL to work with SMF. One that you want to look at is SMF dump. So this is a a JCL that's a job that dumps from one so here you would write man.y this is one dot man dot y and into a I call it a mushix dump and this is the program we use if 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 asm fdp dp stands for dump so smf for smf dp for dump so this pro this program also exists on mvs and we could dump now the question is of course in mvs once we dumped it how do we look how do we produce reports since we don't have a report writer? We could use sort. We have a very old sort installed in TK4, but it's very, very limited and it won't it, it would it wouldn't be easy to use sort that we have in, in this MBS here. Um, another way to do it since we don't have Rex in this MBS, I uh, hope that Jurgen Winkelmann will uh, introduce Rex or in the next update, in update 9 of TK4, because there is actually a Rex that has been compiled for the mainframe architecture. Uh, it's actually on GitHub somewhere. And so if Jürgen um, in, has it in his good grace to introduce it in, um, in uh, update 9 of TK4, that would make a lot of things much easier for all of us. So we could use Rex once we have it. We could use, of course, Assembler which is probably my favorite way to do it. Uh, Bob could also use COBOL or PL1. Now, I'll show in this video that there are some solutions to use uh, these languages, and we're gonna look at them. But the problem still exists in that we have to first dump it into the data set, and then we have to write a program for each individual use of the SMF data. So if you wanted to, have a report that shows us who deleted which data sets we would have to write one pl1 program if you wanted to see who created uh, catalogs we would have to use uh, write a different program because as you know in smf everything is written out but everything corresponds to some kind of type smf type record those are variable records as we've seen variable length records and so each activity that happens is under a smf type record and then there's even a subset a subtype uh, right of uh, of each record and so for each different use would have to write a different program and that's why ice tool is kind of handy because we can we can uh, easily write a new report by just changing a few lines but um, in s in mbs 3.8 we would have to write a program for that however uh, greg price the the person behind Prycroft 6 here that wrote Imon also wrote another amazing piece of software called RevEdit. And that's you use RevEdit every time that you edit the data set. So right now I'm using RevEdit as you can see here. And RevEdit is quite an amazing piece of software and we probably only use 10% of the features of, of Ref edit and RFE that's out of the features that are out there. Most people use a very small subset of them. However, the amazing possibility with Ref uh, Ref edit and RFE is that we can actually look into the collection vSAM data sets or vSAM clusters for SMF in real time. So as you remember, we had sys1.manx was the previous one in use, 99.3% full. And right now it's writing to the active one is uh, y, man y. So if you look into sys1.manx, um, we can press here B for browse, so we don't actually open it for writing. So I wouldn't want to open it for writing, just B. And now the amazing thing is if you press SMF, look what happens. RevEdit is actually able to look at the records and interpret them in, in real time. 
and so there's no need to um, to write a report or in PL1 or in, in some kind of sorting product or in an assembler we can just look at it in real time so once we're there these are all the records obviously if if you look at it without pressing SM, SMF there are in hex they will be in hex so maybe we can do this yes so this is all you would see because this is all in hexadecimal and binary basically but once you turn on SMF then RevEdit is may, able to make sense out of it so let's see what we can get here those these are the records as they come in in sequential uh, in times in, in time sequence and so each record could be a completely different thing and uh, you can see here from the length I scroll to the right they're variable length and they can be very long some of them okay so now how do we work with this if you go to this website PACSIS Pacific Systems Group and search for SMF records they've actually done a very good job at listing all the main SMF type records and um, and from there you can study what each sub what each SMF type record does for instance um, this type 15 is output update in out or out in data set activity so this shows us any activity that's with that has to do with data set either uh, creation or update or even del deletion um, so that would be one for instance let's if you want to find out who has created data sets then we could write here find smf 15 all because this is uh, oops what did i press here because 15 is the update and if i say all it finds all of those and now we see that there was a user here uh, actually a very nice person very knowledgeable person who's been helping a lot uh, out a lot on the discord channel um, this person here has done a lot of data set activity and I see here for instance that he created a data set called BMDP source which is a scientific package tool uh, which he actually installed on my cloud MVS all this is running on my cloud MVS to which you can get an account by just going with your browser moshix.dainu.net you will be redirected to a form you fill out the form your name what do you want to do your desired login desired password and you can get an account on the system and um, and so this user here is just one of the users who went through this procedure and he uses my system mainly I believe because it's up 24 7 and so it's always accessible from everywhere you don't have to start it on your laptop and shut it down it's always up we have about 100 plus users and um, and so he installed a package here which of course he's uh, welcome to do and it tells us here also which subsystem of or which access method of MBS created this data set so we already we have quite a bit of information we know the time we know the day we know the sub the system ID which of course is TK4 minus and for every TK4 and then we know the user ID we know the data set name and we know that he used he created with BSAM now BSAM and QSAM are closely related and and then there's BPAM which is uh, which is a different access method which it leaves traces with different SMF types but for this operation it's still caught here and then it tells us where he created and which volume and and we can get all this information now we see that uh, this user Furlan had quite a lot of activity he updated a lot of records I'm probably he was he was probably writing some kind of software we can actually this is an open system so we can there's no privacy here in the sense that you don't want to put information you want other people to read this is almost like a scientific community where everything is out in the open so we can actually have, go and have a look at it um, what was it SMF BMTP CNTL BMTP CNTL and yeah so it looks like he created some programs here 
and and so that's why you see a lot of updates here as he was writing this code this looks like some scientific stuff which is perfectly fine with me I'm very happy that he's writing code and running and having my MVS system be of of uh, use hopefully to him um, yeah BIMED programs are easy to use if you ignore what you don't need to know <laughs> okay um, so we can see here that there's quite a bit of activity but it's not only this user we also have other users so we have this user here captain and other users also MF, MF1 the the uh, report activity report that's of course also heavily based on SMF and Arab as well so you can see here all the activity now on TK4 because we have IMON installed we can actually get to a lot of this information also a different way let me quickly get out of here if we go to K we have the we enable the historical data selection parameters so if you just um, press here you will see all the data set events where where does IMON get this information you guessed it right of course from SMF so you can see here who has ever um, written or created records all this information is here as well so there's another way to look at it obviously this is better formatted because we also have as uh, data job events so you can see here some people ran here a user ran this job here uh, the dump job and yeah it's furlan again one of our heaviest users and these are loader job steps when people executed some some uh, by load modules and we also have um, I don't know who this is I don't remember I created the account for that person but I don't remember right now so you can see here all the activity and we have job step events and of course we have the MF1 interval that were captured so this is a better formatted way but we if we don't want to use that we can also go here and and switch to uh, so this is the binary look of it view of it and now we switch to now let's we can also get um, let's say find catalog creation find SMF 36 and this is all the activity where that relates to uh, catalog so every time the catalog was updated or or an entry was deleted you would see activity here and so you see here the jobs that worked on the catalogs or we could for instance see whenever js2 was started hopefully just only once find the smf 42 and these are oh sorry these are stop job starts by uh, done by us uh, by just two which makes sense uh well let's see what else we have vsem activity uh, find smf 65 yes find smf 62 should have a lot of this yeah then we have a lot of the records relate to resource measurement facility which is a subsystem of a later version of MVS that collects performance numbers so that you can do a performance report um, let's see we have, of course we have no DB2 DB2 is everything that's 100 to 103 I think then kicks will be 110 WebSphere FTP clients uh, there's a lot of sub records here which you can look at now you can also do subtypes so you can do find smf 42 subtype 15 or 
you can do find 42 subtype 1 okay so that if you know the subtype of the record then you can put it in as well so let's go back here to to type 15 um, then we have the subtypes and here's the description of this whole record so if you know the subtype you can also look for that so let's do find SML 15 187 oops sorry 16 so as this doesn't have a subtype let's look for something else error statistics by volume uh, actually this will be interesting to find the SMF 21 no there's no error volume errors So there's, of course, there's still a lot of data here that we need to somehow sometimes when we have the, the same job that, that we need to, the same information we need to get again and again and again, it is of course better to have a report produced because number one, you don't miss any records because there's so much data that we'll see on the screen here. Number two, uh, it's better, it's easier formatted. So how do we produce reports here on MBS? Well, anything that you usually want to do, somebody in the mainframe world, somebody already thought about it. So the first place to turn to is always the CBT tape, which on my cloud MBS is already installed. And I found out by searching that there is a, that somebody here wrote a, a report which collects data out of SMF and tells you who did what to what files or what data set on the system and um, it's a quite an extensive facility in fact they called it the data set audit facility the person who wrote it uh, this clearly consulting its company somewhere and they have okay this, this person Michael clearly wrote most of it I guess and so it's a very extensive system for reporting on what on what's going on what happened to what data set by whom and when now he has two versions of this in this cbt 429 file 094 so that's what we want to look for here however one is in assembler and, and that's okay the only problem is that this is expected to be compiled with the high-level assembler, which we don't have in MBS. But of course we have it on newer systems and I do have access to uh, ZOS 2.1 at the University of Leipzig on a real mainframe, which the University of Leipzig has graciously granted me over the last uh, four or five months. Um, and so I could compile this there. However, and you can see here I did actually try to do that because I uploaded this here and I have it here this is the same thing I transferred over from the MBS system to to the university and and that's all fine however I couldn't get this to I, you can see here actually after I tried to compile it what happens So this doesn't go through. It tells us that um, 12 was the highest severity code, which means it's not it cannot produce a load module. And the reason for that is that 
uh, and it's a quite a big job as you can see here, 77,000 lines of assembler. Uh, so it, it's 741 object records written. It's, it's a big load module. However, uh, the problems with this is that um, this requires some libraries which are not present on the mainframe of the university, such as this one here. Uh, that's, uh, I assume, that's a library that comes with an uh, SAS. SAS is a software company that produces software for mainframes, amongst others. And they have, and I know they have a reporting tool for us for SMF, and they probably have also a library so you can program against that. And this this um, assumes that this macro library is there, but it's not. Then there is another user macro library, which is also not there, but I think I was able to recreate the macros that it was using there. And, um, and then this library is also not there, which is the ice tool library, because the University of Leipzig doesn't use the um, that tool and so there's a few libraries which I am missing and as a result when I try to compile it I can't really assemble this this whole thing uh, also produces a lot of lines which uh, bumped out my job from the system once so I reduced I, I changed the source code so it wouldn't create as many lines but I'm still I'm still at 25,000 lines, I believe, yeah, which is which is a lot. So I wasn't able to compile this yet. I'm still working on it. If I if I manage to compile it, I'll let you know and put um, and, and put it in my MBS, put the load module on my MBS system here in the cloud. Uh, so that's uh, I thought I could have an easy. Well, my idea was to compile this in 24-bit on ZOS, and once I have a 24-bit A mode and R mode for the assembler. Uh, I'll put a load module in 24-bit, I could transfer over to the MBS system and it would work. That was my idea. However, that didn't work because I'm missing the macro libraries. So then he has an older version of DAF, which is written in PL1. Now, that's all nice. As you can see here, this is PL1. And as you can see, it has all the SMF records types. And that's okay. The problem with that is that this is meant to be compiled with the, not the PL1 compiler comes with MVT, the PL1F compiler. This compiler, I actually know this compiler very, very well. It's, it's a compiler I love. This is the PL1 optimizer compiler. And it's a compiler I worked on for many years and this is um, this is the compiler learned to program on it's the IBM PL1 optimizer compiler in 24-bit and then later they updated it for 31-bit once MBS XA came out and that programmed on the 31-bit compiler as well but uh, so yeah this assumes um, in the IBM optimizer compiler and uh, I tried to compile it with the PL1 F compiler from the 60s and unfortunately uh, it's not able to compile it so we're kind of stuck here <laughs> um, with uh, with between uh, an assembler program which we could compile on another system assemble another system and bring back but we missed the libraries the macro libraries and then a, a pl1 uh, source that will probably work but we don't have the optimizer compiler the more modern compiler to compile it uh, so, however, um, a person has told me, and uh, thank you very much, up there in the north, there is another way to do this. And if, you must, if you're probably aware that every MVS system comes with a sample library, it's called sys1.sample library. And if we browse there, I heard from a friend up north that there is a collection of SMF reports already written and so let's uh, let's look at this okay that's not our problem 
That's not it either. This is assembler, but what does this do? Hmm. Here is one. Okay, so this is seems to be SMF related. Here, of course, we have the dump program, which I already alluded to. It's in the system. And the cord print routine. So yeah, this is PL1. So we could use this one. And that's almost trivial. And I believe some users on my MVS system have already done it. So here there is somebody using the sort to run some uh, to produce some uh, some uh, report. So we could try for instance to run this. And we do it uh so one S. Level class A message class five uh, zero one. Try to run this exit lib sort data sort n sysman. Let me see here. Okay, so let's see. What we got so sort lib We're using the sort that's built in it's a very ancient sort which needs to work it only works with this 2314 old old disks and that's the reason why we still have this very ancient test devices in tk4 however somebody i think the, um, could be wrong but i think his name is mike armstrong is working on a new sort that will work on any kind of disk so can't wait for this to happen so this is the sort library where is the Fields sort in so what is this? Let's just try to run it, see what happens. Yeah, predictably. Um, I need to find out how to run this thing, but this produces a report of SMF records with uh, with the sort, and that, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video. I've read this very, very ancient sort, and learning this language is, <laughs> I mean, it's much, much easier to learn assembler or peel one than learn the sort language here. Uh, I will play with this a little bit, and if I manage to get this to work reliably for something that's useful, I will put it up as well on the on this uh, cloud MBS system. But um, right now, I want to say that this is probably too complicated, too ancient, too arcane for any of us to work. So the outcome here is MBS, either you write your own program with, um, with there's some examples in PL1, as I've seen, I've shown in the CBT file 094, or you write in assembly, which is probably the easiest way to do it. Um, or you use the, the, the possibility to look at it online. Oops, uh, what was it, sys1 and x. By doing this and switching to SMF, and you can see everything that happened here. Or you use Imon, which is just Imon is just a way to look at SMF data in a different way, and go to K for historical knowledge display, just the same thing, and then see who did what. As you can see here, immediately you picked up that I opened up um, CBT tape file zero nine four. That's how reliable this is. And uh, so it also shows us which access method, BPAM, which is faster than other access methods, but also more 
this more assembly program we needed to use it anyway uh, so as you can see here there's plenty of ways within our MBS 3.8 as delivered by TQ4 to look at the data so to gain the same insight we would have to on ZOS since we don't usually have I'm on on ZOS would have to go and produce actual reports as I've shown in the previous video but this is the second installment of the mini series specifically targeted at TK4 as you can see there's a, a, a few ways to look at that information that we need to uh, ga gain in ZOS however we need to rewrite more reports and I have made a lot of progress over the last few days in um, in taking existing report writing, making it work on ZOS, making some modifications, a very extensive one. But that's going to be in uh, in the next installment of this mini series. This is I'm just going to give you a preview here. This is what I've been working on the last few days. Um, oops, no, not this one. Um, and all the headers. So I'm working on all these things here. So that, and this, so that uh, we can create uh, some meaningful reports on uh, ZOS as well. But this is for a later date. Um, today we looked at NBS. The net outcome is you need to use a, a multitude of tools to get the information that you need to get but it is definitely doable in MBS as well. Or if you want to uh, take out your, uh, your APL1 compiler and start compiling or writing stuff in COBOL even, or in Assembler or even in Fortran, that's certainly doable too. There's plenty of examples in pre-installed in TK4 and it will be outside the scope of this video today to, to write a full report uh, here, even though examples are bound. If I manage to get either the Assembler to work or the PL1 more comprehensive uh, data set audit facility, I will, um, I will put it here on the system and notify in one of the later videos. If you like this video, please press on the thumbs up button. If you have not subscribed yet to the Moshe Explain From channel, I would urge you to do so now. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.